OK, so this is uh, the next in my series on reducing the amount of working memory some things occupy in physics. So this one we're going to talk about automation in physics. Hoping to get out of this is look at why we want might want to automate certain processes. Um, what we need to know, so this I'm going to do this video specifically about this idea of automation in the process of unit conversions, which is going to be really useful, hopefully. And then we're going to look at what process are we going to use to try and automate unit conversion. So I've used the word a lot. So let's talk about what I actually mean by that. So what I'm trying to do is get certain processes we use in physics all the time to the point where we can do them without any conscious thought. So actively, we've done we're so used to this, we've got a routine that we've used over and over again, and we can just do it without even thinking. That's what we're trying to work towards. And the way we're going to achieve that is we're going to have a step-by-step -step process that we use for unit conversion every single time. And by using it repeatedly over a period of time, we will essentially automate that process. That's the idea. So why would we want to do that? Um, because we have to invest a fair chunk of effort in order to achieve automation. So as I talked about in my previous video, one of the things we want to do in physics is take load off our working memory because we need it to be able to do some problem solving and logical thinking and all those things. And if we can put certain processes in on autopilot, that's going to help us because it's going to free up space for doing that logical thinking, that problem solving, that reasoning that's so critical for success in physics. OK, so um, in terms of setting up this automation process for converting units, there's some things we just have to know, first of all. So some information that we just need in our long term memory. And that's what the prefixes or the symbols for the prefixes actually tell you to do. So what I've done is I've created a list of the most common ones that you come across. Um, and what I've done is I've said what operator they're telling you to apply and what factor they're telling you to apply it with. So, for example, if we see uh, a K prefix, uh, so that stands for kilo. And what that's telling you to do is with the number, it's telling you to multiply by 1000. So one example is if so if you saw in a question, you saw you had two kilo newtons. So you see this K in here. What that's telling you to do is take your two and multiply it by 1000. And that's so two kilo newtons is 2000 newtons. Likewise, if we have something else, so we've got five mega newtons. Um, what the mega is telling you to do is telling you to multiply and it's telling you to multiply by one million. Now, you'll notice what I'm going to start to do is use standard form in here because writing out all these zeros is just a massive waste of time. So when we're using these really big ones or really small ones, we tend to use standard form. So uh, 10 to the 9 is just standard form for one billion. 10 to the 12 is just standard form for one trillion. So what we're going to do is for giga, we take the number and multiply it by a billion. Terra, we'd multiply it by a trillion. So the prefixes are a really handy way of representing really big numbers, but it's something you have to watch out for in calculations. Um, it's something that gets missed quite a lot. OK, so on the flip side, for the ones that represent things that are small, you'll notice the operator is different here. So instead of multiplying, we're now dividing and you just have to remember that. So let's say we had two milli newtons. Um, so a small m means a milli. So what that's telling you to do is divide by 1000. So you can see that's what I've done here. We've done two divided by 1000. If we have something a little bit uh, smaller, so we've got five micro newtons. So micro symbol tells you to divide and it tells you to divide by a million. And if we were to actually write that as a decimal, we'd be writing a boatload of zeros. So the way we write it is like this, five times 10 to the minus six. You'll notice when we divide by 10 to the six, we end up with five times 10 to the minus six in there. Um, and if we had nano, we'd end up with five times 10 to the minus nine in there. Um, so that's the things we just have to know and have in our long-term memory. We have to know what kilo, milli, nano actually 
mean in terms of the operator and the conversion factor. You just have to know those things. How do we go about doing that? So the way we turn things into a long-term memory, as I discussed in my video on putting things into your long-term memory, we need some type of retrieval activity. And the simplest one for you to set up is something like I've got here. So I just took an A4 page and I've created myself a four column table. So we've got the prefix, the symbol, we've got the operator and we've got the factor. And you can see I've put them all in standard form because that's something we need to get used to using. Then what you can do is you can fold your paper along your column lines until you've got what you can see on the left. So then what you can do is you can use this to go, OK, so kilo, uh, what's the symbol for that? Well, it's a K. What's the operator for that? Well, it's multiply. And what's the factor for that? Well, it's a thousand or 10 to the three. So it's just a way of testing yourself, seeing whether it's gone into your long term memory and going through the process for turning it into one. And it's a nice, simple activity to do that. So that's how you can actually go about committing that information to memory and it, you'll find this helps a lot when you're dealing with calculations where these conversions crop up a lot okay so that's how we are that's the information we just have to know so what is going to be our automation process so if we want something to become automatic we have to follow the same process every single time so the process that I'm going to encourage you to use is when we get given a question, the first thing I do, I'm not even really reading the question, I'm just scanning through it. Have I been given any prefixes in the information? That's what I'm looking for. First of all, I'm not trying to read. I'm not trying to interpret the question or anything like that. I'm just looking for prefixes. And whenever I see a number with a prefix, I'm going to convert it straight away before I even try and answer the question. OK, so these are going to be the two steps of the process that I use the first time I look at any question in here. And you might even consider, let's say you're doing an exam, just going through spending a couple of minutes at the start of it, just going through every single question, scanning for prefixes. So then you know you've covered it for later on. That might be a, not a suitable strategy. So let's have an example of putting this into practice. So I'm not even going to read the question. All I'm doing is scanning through here, looking for prefixes. So uh, 2.5 meters per second, that's fine. There's no prefix on either the meters or the seconds, all good. Has a wavelength of 50 centimeters. So we found a prefix in here. So what does our process say to do? We've scanned through it, we found our prefix. We're gonna convert that straight away before I even read the rest of the question. So centi, uh, centi tells us we're gonna divide and we're gonna divide by 10 to the two or divide by 100. So I'm gonna take 50, divide it by 100, we get 0.5 and that's now in meters. So now I'm in a, a, a stage where I can actually carry out this question. So I, I've done that straight away. Let's just do another example so we can see this in action. So uh, again, not even reading the question, don't care, just scanning through, oh, we've got a prefix because we've got 1.2 kilowatts in there. Continuing to scan through the volt, the one point, oh, sorry, 115 volts, no problem, there's no prefix in there. So there's only one conversion we have to do. Now we've got kilo, so from my memory, that means multiply. So kilo means we're going to use multiply, and we're going to multiply by 10 to the 3, or 1,000. So we've taken 1 1.2 times it by 1,000, and we can see that the power is 1,200 watts in there. So again, we're not going to slip up in any calculations later on, because we've already converted it, and we don't have to worry about it anymore. So um, something we have to watch out for with unit conversions that um, we need to be careful of in our process is what if the unit is square or cubed? Does that change our process? And yes, it does. The way we handle it, um, it has to, we have to deal with that. So um, what we need to do is we have to remember to apply the unit power to the conversion fact two, and that's a load of gibberish. So let's actually show you what that means. So if we have five centimeters squared, the unit you can see has a square in it. It's up here, this one here. So what we need to do is apply the unit power, which is this in this case is a square, to the conversion factor as well. So we've got centi, so we're telling us to divide, and we're dividing by 100 or 10 to the two but we need to apply that power to the conversion factor as well. So you'll notice in here, the 10 to the two 
is going to get squared. Now, 10 to the 2 squared is 10 to the 4, because 100 squared is 10,000. So this is a stage we have to remember to think about in our automation process. We, we go, OK, so we're looking for conversion factors. Have we found one? Yes. Uh, does that conversion factor have a power? Yes or no. And then we then apply the correct conversion. OK, so in this case, we've got 0 0.0005. Um, I probably should have written that as 5 times 10 to the minus 4 because we're not getting to too many zeros there. OK. We're going to modify our automation process slightly. So we're still going to scan in the given information of the prefixes, but we're also going to scan for the power of the unit as well, because we need both of those to make the correct conversion. So we, we're going to modify our automation process slightly. Um, and the way we will make this process automatic is by using this every single time that we do a question. Every single time we're going to scan for prefixes. We're going to scan for those powers and we're going to convert straight away before we do anything else. And we're going to do this every single time. Okay. And I said at the start, this is what we want to achieve. We want to know why we want to automate in terms of thinking about our working memory. Uh, we need to know some information before we can do this automation. So we have to make sure that information is in our long term memory. And we need to know our three steps for our automation process. So those are the things I'd like you to take away. In terms of how you then go about doing this automation, that's through repetition. So using those three stages with lots of practice. So a good resource you can use to do this is on Isaac Physics, which has some resources which are brilliant for doing this. Um, so I don't work for them. I'm just a massive fan, uh, which is why I'll keep advertising. So if you're not on there already, uh, go to www.isaacphysics.org and you will once you have signed up and logged in, you will see a page like this. And what you want to do is, depending on your level, you can select the relevant section. Um, I imagine most people will probably be going to endorse this. So if you click on. You'll get a page that looks like this and you want to go to physics skills mastery do that you'll get to this page and what the section you're going to want is skills this will just allow you to do some practice without worrying about any physics laws or anything like that and some units that are some sections that would be good for you uh, the sections on units additional units and dimensions and also standard form will all be putting into use the different things that we've seen in this video and so i'd highly recommend going and checking that, these out and having a crack at them